Thanks for joining us today. At City Life, we have one purpose, making it easy for people to say yes to Jesus. We believe today's message will empower you to do exactly that. But remember that church is so much more than a sermon you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life. Good morning, church. How are you on this fine Sunday? You know what I'm excited about? I'm excited that you're here, you're watching online. I'm also excited we have a studio audience. We have one here, and we have some more people in a different place that are watching, and it's been a really interesting morning, but we are so excited because God's going to do something amazing today in your life. I believe that so strong. And I'm excited. This new series, Into the Unknown. How do you go forward when you have no idea where you're going? And, you know, I think we are all well aware that of late, our world, everything about our life has been radically adjusted and disrupted in some way, shape, or form. Isn't this true? Yes, it's true. And I mean, there's been all sorts of memes that have been floating around. If you were a meme person, meme, not mean, meme, M-E-M-E, meme. I think my favorite meme describing times right now is the Jumanji meme. And if you're not familiar with that, you just have to go look that up. But if you are, it feels like somebody has been playing Jumanji with everything that has been going on. And I, you know, we've experienced change on just about every level of life, locally, globally, socially, politically, and even in ways recently that we're just all kind of shaking our heads. I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like it's like emotional whiplash. It's just like, which way do I go? It's just like, oh, it's like, you know, first it's like pandemic, and then isolate, and then everybody's hoarding, and then it's kind of like everything just stops. It's like the planet just goes, Meh, nothing's happening. And it's like, okay, we kind of take a breath. And then it's like, oh, here in Alberta, it's spring. It's like, maybe it's going to be awesome. And kind of there's light at the end of the tunnel. And then like, boom, it's just like the reboot, rebooted crazy to a whole new level. And it's like, even just in the last 13 days, we have seen human beings being killed right in front of our eyes because their, their skin is a particular color. We have seen riots. We have seen protests, which I actually think are necessary. And I just want to give a shout out. I think it was exciting to see what happened in our own city in Edmonton on Friday night. 15,000 people protesting peacefully. Thank you to everyone who did that peacefully because change needs to happen in our world. But I, I think it's safe to say as we're looking around, how do you respond to all this? Like, how, how do you respond? And I think it's, I'm going to make the message super short today. It's this. Our world needs Jesus. Yeah. The end. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here, yes. No, hopefully you didn't take off. But you know what? I think some of us, that's kind of where we're at. We're just like, I'm done. We're looking at our news feeds, we're looking at social media, we're looking around us, and we're just like, sign off, exit, I am done playing the game. No more Jumanji. I am not going to participate in this crazy little thing called life. Like some of us, that's where we're at. But you know what? There's others. Maybe you're trying to look forward. You're trying to go forward. You're Trying to, you know, you're wondering about the future. You're wondering about school. You're wondering about that career that you invested thousands of dollars in. Are you ever going to get a job in that career? Some of you are looking at the business that you've given your life to building and creating, and you're now looking, wondering, is this ever going to reopen again? 
Is this industry even gonna be around? You're wondering about your job, you're wondering about your marriage, you're wondering about your family, you're wondering about your health. Maybe you're one of those you know, people that have a compromised immune system, you're high risk, and you're like, is my life ever gonna be normal? Or, you know, there's all sorts of things that you're wondering, how am I gonna go forward? But you know what, there's also others that something has been stirring in you over these last several weeks, maybe it's just been, you know, over the, this whole time, like right from the beginning of all of the shutdown and life drastically changing, something started to stir and you're like, you genuinely want change. You want change for yourself. You want change for your world. You want, you, something has shifted inside you and you're kind of restless and you're a little bit dissatisfied and, and kind of unsure and it's almost like this discontent in you and you're kind of like, hey, what's going on? You know what? A lot of times, that's how God starts doing something in us. So here's the question again. How do you go forward when you have no idea where you're going? You have no idea what to do. Well, you know what? This is what we're gonna look at over the next few weeks in this new series, Into the Unknown. We are gonna look at it on kind of like broad life perspective, but we're also gonna look at what does this mean in our day-to-day -day lives? What does this mean in the down-to-earth basics? What about everyday life? How do you, what does this mean going into the unknown? So. To start things off today, we are going to take a story from the Bible because, believe it or not, there were some guys who were facing very similar unknowns about their life. They were, their whole way of life had com been completely in an upheaval, it had been completely turned upside down, relationally, financially, socially, even their faith, and unbeknownst to them, they were going to experience very soon a second wave of upheaval in their life. Stuff was gonna go down, there's gonna be a lot of confusion, they were gonna experience some emotional whiplash themselves, and so their leader, Jesus, he was doing everything he could to prepare them, to reassure them that they weren't going to be alone. And this is what Jesus said to them. It's in John 14, 16 to 20. And Jesus, he said, I will ask the Father to send you another helper. Everyone say helper. Helper. The Holy Spirit of truth who will remain constantly with you. The world does not recognize the spirit of truth because it does not know the spirit and is unable to receive him. But you do know the spirit because he lives with you and he will dwell in you. I will never abandon you like orphans. I will be with you. In a little while, the world will not see me, but I will not vanish completely from your sight. Because I live, you will also live. And at that time, you will know that I'm in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. And the disciples are like, what the heck are you talking about, Jesus? He goes on, John 16, seven. This is the same conversation, just another couple chapters, but it's all in the same setting. Jesus continues. He said, the truth is, my departure is a gift uh, that it will serve you well because if I don't leave, the great helper will not come to your aid. When I leave, I will send him to you. Again, the disciples were like, what are you talking about, Jesus? So if you're hearing this and you're like, I don't get it. You know what? The disciples didn't get it either. And they were standing in the same room as Jesus. He was talking to them face to face. So don't feel bad if you ever read the Bible and go, huh? I don't get it. You know what? Jesus, the guys he talked to, they didn't get it either. And he was talking to them. So what is God's provision for the unknown? It's this, the Holy Spirit, the great helper. Now, what or who was Jesus referring to? What was he talking about? Well, maybe you have heard of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you kind of heard that name or you're, you know, you think, oh yeah, I know the Holy Spirit. You're very familiar with this. You know what? Today, just put all aside, I really believe you're going to discover something new 
about the Holy Spirit. So here we go. Holy Spirit 101. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit is God's personal presence. The Holy Spirit is God. He is one part of the Trinity, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. We are not going to try to unpack how that works today because I don't know how it works. I just know it does. But the Holy Spirit is God. He's God's personal presence. He is everywhere. He is all around us. He is He is here with us. He is with you right now in your home, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your car, wherever you're watching. He is with you. Those of you who are sitting in the auditorium, our small little group of studio audience, (laughs) he is with you. He is with us here. The Holy Spirit is here. God is everywhere. The thing is, a lot of times we're just not aware of him because we're not tuned in. It's kind of like radio waves. You know, right now, all around us is music. All around us are voices. All around us is invisible noise. And what that is, is it's radio waves. There is music playing of every genre you can imagine. There are news reports. There are people talking. There are interviews. There are radio hosts that are saying things that are probably stupid or funny or whatever. They're giving us a weather report. We just can't hear it because we're not tuned in. You know, if we tune in, we can hear that. And you know, God's presence, the Holy Spirit, he is here right now. God's voice is speaking all the time. God's word, God's voice is speaking to you. And he's speaking words not to condemn, not to judge, but he is speaking words of hope. The Holy Spirit, he's speaking words of encouragement, words of peace. He's speaking words of love over you. He is speaking answers. You know what? Right now, God is speaking solutions and answers and strategies to the craziness in our world today. God's got a solution for racism. God's got a solution for the changes that need to take place in our world, in our systems. God is speaking that right now. We just need to tune in. So here's how this works. Just like Jesus became the body of God in tangible form, the Holy Spirit is the mind of God that we receive when we become a follower of Christ. Jesus was God in the flesh, the body of God that we could see God in the flesh. The Holy Spirit is the mind of God that comes to live in us and dwell in us when we become a follower of Jesus. Because see, Jesus' words, they weren't just to the disciples. They were for every single disciple, every person that would become a follower of Jesus. That would be you and that would be me, those of us that have said, yes, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. And so how do you go forward? When you got no idea where you're going, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. To, and the, the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to lead us confidently. He's going to lead us create courageously in and through every unknown of our life. He wants to lead you through all of the unknowns that relate to your job. He wants, to relate, he wants to lead you through all of the unknowns that relate to your career path. Should you start that business back up again? Is there a new direction that God might be leading you? Should you continue in this relationship? God wants to lead you in the unknowns. Should you even be dating? Maybe not some of you. Some of you, it would be good if you stayed single for a little bit longer. Because you know what? Being single is awesome. Not talking to anybody in particular. Some of you, the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you regarding your family. He's going to lead you in the unknowns about your marriage. He is the voice of God speaking to you. God, see, God wants to speak to you. And he created, he actually designed us and he built us to hear his voice. How do you do that? Well, sometimes when God speaks... The way the Holy Spirit speaks, it's through thoughts. I know that's a lot of times he gives like an impression. It's just like there's an idea, there's a thought, there's an impression. And sometimes it sounds like my thoughts. And you know what? 
the challenge of the pra- the challenge is is to you have to learn how to practice to distinguish your thoughts from God's voice cuz sometimes they sound very much the same but just because you got every thought up here that is not necessarily God that's why we got to practice it we need that's why we do life in community is so we have others who are a little bit more skilled. You know, if you've ever been a musician, you're kind of like, I call them hack musicians. You just kind of teach yourself how to play. You teach yourself how to, um, you know, whether it's play the guitar, play the piano. And, you, you know, I mean, you actually might sound good. But then you get around somebody who is better than you who is a trained musician, they have, they've, they've got skills, they have practiced for years, they have, you know, they, they know some things about theory, or they know some tricks, and they know some techniques, or they, it's like, no, you're not supposed to play it that way, that's a crazy way to play it, that doesn't sound good, actually. You know what? You need somebody who has a little bit more skill to be able to teach you how to play your instrument well. And you know, it's the same way as it comes to how do you recognize the voice of God? How do you learn to discover, distinguish the voice of the Spirit? Well, you need to be around people. That's why God built his church. We do life in community. So we have others who are further along in that relationship with Jesus, teaching us how to hear his voice. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak with, through dreams. Dreams that just, there's just, they feel just a little bit different. Or mostly, God speaks, the Holy Spirit speaks by, through his word, through the Bible. That's why you will never be able to hear the voice of God if you're not reading the word of God. Because you're not going to ever learn how to hear what God's voice sounds like. And a lot of times, the, most of the time, the way the Holy Spirit, I know personal experience, is he'll help me to, re, he'll remind me of a verse that I read, or he'll help me understand maybe a passage of scripture. It's like when I'm reading a verse or chapters that I've read like hundreds of times, and all of a sudden I see something different I've never seen before, that's the Holy Spirit. He's turning the light on something. And so all of these, the, the Holy Spirit is the one that will guide us into the unknown because he is God. He knows everything. He knows the future. He knows you. He knows what is best for you and I. Now, this is all great, but there is more. Because after his resurrection and before he left his disciples to return to his Father in heaven, Jesus gave the disciples part two of Operation Holy Spirit. And he explained it as an answer to a question that the disciples had, get, had asked him. And it was a question that actually the Jewish people, they'd been waiting thousands of years for an answer. And it was this question, when is God going to do something about our situation? When is God going to do something about this, this situation? And particularly, When is God going to do something about this injustice? Because the Jewish people were a minority people who were very much persecuted. And you know, I think this question, when is God going to do something about our situation? You know what? I think in a way it's the same question many of us and and many people are asking today. They might not be asking God, God, when are you going to do something? But people are saying, when is change going to come? When When is life going to get back to normal? Will things be normal? When will life get better? When will, you know, whatever. When will my marriage get better? When will my kids be better? When will the problems and the pain stop? When will oppression stop? When will lasting change come? See, the disciples thought Jesus was the answer to that question. He thought he was, they thought he was going to do something about it in a military way. They thought he was going to do something about it as their idea of what this Messiah would be who was gonna come in, overthrow everything that was wrong and set up God's rightness, God's rule. But Jesus had a different answer. Acts 1.8, I need a drink of water. He said, but I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be filled with power. You will be my messengers to Jerusalem throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places on earth. See, this is what Jesus, he was saying, remember how I told you earlier that the Holy Spirit was going to live in you? Well, there's more. He's going to come on you. God, the Holy Spirit is God's personal presence. The Holy Spirit is the mind of God given to us, but the Holy Spirit is also this. The Holy Spirit 
is the power of God in us and on us for our world. Acts 1.8, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be my messengers. See, a lot of times when we hear about the Holy Spirit, if you were in church, you brought up in an environment where there was a lot of talk about the Holy Spirit, and you need the power of God, and the Spirit of God is going to come on you. A lot of times it's in the context of how it will benefit us. God's purpose in giving us his power was not to make our lives better. See, the Holy Spirit would come in us and dwell in us so that we could be, we could be transformed on the inside. We could become different people. We could, we could be, become what real humans were meant to be to those that live and love and we act like Jesus. But even more than that, see, the Holy Spirit coming on us, that's for our world. That's so that we can change our world. That's so that we can bring answers. We can bring solutions because broken, selfish, fear-driven humans cannot change the world. We can't bring solutions. We can't bring lasting peace. We need the power of God in us and we need the power of God on us, but there's more. See, the Holy Spirit is not only God's, the mind of God, he's not only the presence of God around us, the Holy Spirit is not only God's power in and on us, the Holy Spirit is the heart of God. And this is the key right here. Many years later, after Jesus, a guy by the name of Paul, he described it this way. He said in Romans 5, 5, he said, the Holy Spirit was given to us. He has flooded our hearts with God's love. The Holy Spirit that was given to us has flooded our hearts with God's love. The Holy Spirit that was given to us has flooded our hearts with God's love. This is the point of everything that Jesus was about. This is why he was here. Many of you will remember probably what's considered the most famous verse ever. John 3, 16, and if you know it, you can say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Now, whoever believes in him won't perish but will live forever. But here's the second part. John 3, 17, God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world but to be its savior and rescue it. See, that world rescue, or that word, that word world, it's not just about world as in people. See, the salvation, the rescue that God was referring to here, that wasn't just about human beings. Salvation isn't just about the rescue of human beings. God's plan is bigger than that. God rescues human beings so that he could continue his rescue and salvation of the whole world. That means every part of it. That means people. That means cultures. That means systems. See, what is the answer for the issues in our world? today what is the answer for stuff like oppression what is the answer for stuff like like racism what is the answer well it's God's healing power through his people it's God bringing healing to systems that are broken church we need to get this God is not going to wave his magic wand and fix our world God's healing love how is it going to get into the world well it's plan that he's had all along for God so loved the world that he gave his only son where is that son right now he's living in me he's living in you he's living in us God's church God's body 
God's flesh and blood on the planet. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God is dwelling in you and I, that son that God sent to be the rescue and savior. The world not the savior, Jesus is the savior, but now he is living out that salvation life, that salvation love through his church. I love what Dallas Willard, he said, we are called to a love that is beyond our ability to achieve in our humanity. You know, church, if we're gonna bring change to our world, lasting change, you know, human empathy and human compassion has its limits. You know, if we're really gonna get serious, you know, uh, the recent circumstances of what's going on in our world where to the forefront is coming to our attention, something that has been going on for way too long, things like oppression, things like People being oppressed and treated wrongly because their skin is a different tone. Things like racism. If we're going to do a deep dive and really get into understanding that, we need the power of God's Holy Spirit in us because we need to be more than just those that just kind of, we, 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 you can't do this. It hurts when you start digging into and feeling that pain and understanding it. It's emotionally exhausting. And why... Things have, you know, there's been mo movements and things that have fizzled. They've started and then fizzled out. It's because people try to do it in their own strength, in their own love, in their own capacity. And our human capacity cannot love that distance. We need the Holy Spirit sustaining and enabling power to fill us with the love of God that love that goes is so we can respond to needs, so that we have solutions, we have provision. You know, we need to learn how to connect and stay connected to God through His Spirit. We need to learn how to hear His voice and we need to follow His lead to help us make the choices that will actually live out the life of Jesus here and now in our day and time. So how do we do this? Well, you know what? It's actually simple. If you are a follower of Jesus, you already have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. You just need to ask Him to fill you. And in a moment, the team is gonna lead us in a song, and really this song, it's an invitation song. Come Holy Spirit is one of the word, one of the, the lines in this song, Come Holy Spirit. And as we're singing this song in just a minute, this is a song where you can make this a prayer, saying, Holy Spirit, come fill me. I don't just want you in me. I want you on me so that I can be one that brings change to my world. But then here's three questions that we can ask the Holy Spirit. You can ask him, number one, is there anything, Holy Spirit, that I'm trying to do without you? What is it that you would change in me? Is there anything in me that offends you? And you know, here's the hint. Is there anything, if you could open up your life, having a conversation about God, is there anything that you don't want to talk to him about? That's probably a place where he's wanting to bring change. <laughs> but even this, is there anything I could be more effective at with your help, Holy Spirit? Maybe it's your business, maybe your marriage, maybe it's how to be a better parent or how to be a better friend. Those are things the Holy Spirit wants to help you with. So Holy Spirit, is there anything I'm trying to do without you? But here's another question, is there anything you're doing without me? Holy Spirit, is there anything you're doing without me? What am I not seeing? What am I missing? What opportunities in my world can I not see that you're working and where you're inviting me to be a part? You've got me right there, ready to be part of the solution, part of the change, part of transformation, part of doing something new. Holy Spirit, is there anything you're doing without me? And here's the last one. Holy Spirit, wake me up to the love of God that needs to be let out into my world. And you know, I want us, church, the band's gonna lead us now in this song. And as we're leading, as we're singing this song, I wanna invite us, can we, you know, maybe stand where you're at. I just feel there's something about standing that it's, it brings us to attention in a whole new way. But can we make this our prayer? God, we need you, Holy Spirit. God, we need you so desperately. Come on, let's sing with the team. Can go back to the beginning. Can't control 
what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be. Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness. Sing, I'm not enough. I'm not in love unless you come. Will you meet me here again? It's all I want. It's all you Not for a minute. desperately. God, we need you for, God, just the the day-to-day things, the personal things that are, Father, all of those unknowns, those things that are overwhelming, those things that seem impossible, those things that have paralyzed or stalled or those things that are frustrated or whatever that is. God, we need you, Holy Spirit. And church, can you just, you know, whether you're wherever you're at right now, if you could just even just lift your hands, just as it's in, it's just a posture of receiving. 
and just continue to say, Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we want you. God, we desperately need you. God, we need you not just because we really need to be changed from the inside out in so many ways. We need your transforming power because we know and we see so clearly all of those areas, all of those ways, all of those places and spaces that we fall so short of our own expectations, let alone everybody else's. But God, we thank you for that power of your Holy Spirit in us to transform us. But God, more than that, God, we want and we long for your power, Holy Spirit, to be on us. God, that we be able to be that. Father, those that bring life, that bring hope, that release your love, God, the love of God into situations where, Lord, we don't have answers. We don't even know what to do, but God, we know your love is that healing power that transforms, that heals, that rescues, that, Father, does things that we can't do in our own ability. God, we know your, your Holy Spirit is the one that's got the, the answers and the solutions for the systems in our world and our society that are broken. Lord, we know your Holy Spirit is the one that gives gives us a power and sustains us when we just feel like just saying, oh, whatever, I'll just keep doing my own thing and to hell with the rest of the world. God, we, we need your power that we could bring change, bring healing, bring restoration into all of the spheres that we intersect. And so God, we just say, would you come and fill us as your church, as your people. And you know, just with your eyes closed, even if you're watching, just keep your eyes closed. And I just wanna, I wanna lead us in a prayer, especially if you're watching and you aren't what you would maybe consider yourself a follower of Jesus. You know what, all of that can change today. And I wanna invite all of us, you know, can we pray this prayer together? Just say, Jesus, I need you. I say yes to surrendering my life to follow you, fill me now with your life, with your power, and with your love. Make me new so that I can transform the world that I'm in through your life and your love, amen. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you wanna take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc or fill out the Next Step section on the City Life app. It's an honor as a church to play just a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to seeing you soon here at City Life.